And um, so we started uh, fleeing uh, the area. And uh, so me, uh, because um, uh, like uh, other people, I was with another group of people, of students said, you see now uh, the RPF actually, if they want to take power, we are, we, we are kids. We, we haven't been in power. We are not in power. Why continue fleeing? So we went to, uh, to this place that um, the Kibeho camps. Actually, we, we remained in Rwanda. I didn't flee in the 94, like with the other people, I just remained in Rwanda. And uh, so we remained there in that camp until the RPF actually in uh, 95 came and uh, attacked the refugee camp and um, uh, destroyed the refugee camp. And the, the way we survived, it's a miracle because we never expected that the way the Zimbabwean, the Australian uh, peacekeeping and the UN w- was there, it could be invaded by RPF. We could having reports of how you, uh, RPF was killing people in the villages. So we said that probably because we are here, we are safe because the organization, UNHCR was there, Red Cross International, Red Cross uh, was there and the other humanitarian organizations, but the most importantly, mm. the UN was, uh, was there, um, UNHCR and the organization, and so just- okay, well, William, just another quick interruption for those yes. who are following and are unfamiliar with the UNHCR. It's the United Nations uh, High Commissioner for Refugees. It's basically the entity in the United Nations that, that takes care of refugees. Please proceed, William. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, the UN, uh, the, the UNHCR, thank you that they were for um, explaining that. So all humanitarian organizations were that refugee camp which we made us feel that we are protected. But the things started changing uh, because uh, uh, we started hearing the reports that Ibn Jira, uh, Ibn Jira, I think is a general or a kana, I don't know. Ibn Jira was in Ibutari. Uh, he was the most feared person by the, uh, the Rwandans at that time. So we found that he was in Ibutare planning. And the, so the reports continued coming, uh, saying that uh, actually uh, Ibn Jira was uh, planning to attack uh, um, uh, Ruhengeri. I, I mean it to, to attack the camp, uh, the Chibeho refugee camp. So, and the, another meeting that uh, he was having uh, meetings with the other military personnel from Burundi, so that even if refugees escaped from the Chibeo camp, when they go to Burundi, they would be uh, pushed back uh, to Rwanda. So all those reports actually made us uh, feel afraid because we didn't know know where to go now. So there was um, these humanitarian organizations to our surprise, a few days before the attack of the refugee camp, most of the humanitarian organizations had already left the, the refugee camp, which was a sign that uh, something bad, terrible was going to happen. So, and uh, then these guys came and they attacked, attacked the refugee camp. When they attacked the refugee camp, actually, they started when it was uh, what the people don't explain is that they started at night, pushing at night. The, the first step was to squeeze closer, closer to the camp and push us on uh, one side of the hill of the camp, uh, of the place in the Kibeho. And uh, once they squeezed us, they, uh, they continued uh, pushing, pushing, and they cut the supply of food uh, water and the humanitarian supplies such as uh, medical supplies. So because there were no uh, no people, uh, humanitarian staff had left the refugee camps. So the only people started doing things that were the soldiers from uh, Zimbabwe. I mean, I, I think I guess they were from Zimbabwe, if not Zambia, but most from Zam- uh, Zimbabwe. Then uh, others from Australia and the other uh, countries they started uh, providing some kind of a humanitarian 
to refugees, especially the kids, the mothers who had the kids. But he, uh, that siege continued so that the aim of the siege was to make sure that they starve us so that by the time they uh, launch assault on the camp, we were so weak and nobody could even run away. So they could um, even- Sorry them. for an interruption, um, uh, mm-hmm. William. So this is uh, uh, in the in the Kibeho, it's in, a, it's in the south of Rwanda, and this is 1995, because uh, yes. you've been, been uh, displaced within Rwanda, but you, you were still in Rwanda in 1995. That's when yes. this camp, yeah, so that for people who are following, uh, I wanted to sort of uh, uh, confirm this is the attack uh, on the refugee camps in Kibeho in south of Rwanda in um, uh, April 19, 1995. Yeah, correct? Yes, you are okay. right. So I, me and the, some other uh, student, you know, actually we didn't flee because we thought these people are saying they are Rwandans. Uh, mm-hmm. so the regimes are changing why continue fleeing and it's our country. Let's be here, probably we'll continue having opportunity to study. We finish, the life goes on, but we were so mistaken actually. It was one of the worst uh, childish decisions that we ever took. Those people were not about the regime change. Those people were about uh, the system change. The system change means that it's changing everything. That's why you see them, they have uh, renamed everything. The Rohingya is no longer Rohingya is Musans. Uh, we have other places called the other names. We no longer have a place like Changugu. We no longer have places like Kibungo. We no longer have the same flag that we used to have for mm-hmm. the public. So it was about a system change. That's mm-hmm. what we didn't understand then, but we were so naive, we were kids, we couldn't understand what was going on. But now we understand better as we see the action. Mm-hmm. So by remaining in the Kibeho refugee camp, that was the worst mistake. So when uh, in the Kibeho, then they attacked and they killed the people mercilessly. And the, the whole night, actually, they were killing people. By the time it was during the day, it was a massacre everywhere. Uh, they had a massacre. They, Thousands, thousands, children, uh, women, elderly people, everybody that who was uh, not lucky that day was killed. So that time, the same night I said, I'm not uh, going to wait here. And they come and they, uh, and they smash my star using the, uh, the hammer. Uh, mm-hmm. I better die running. So I just ran into the the banana plantations. That's where I ended up. And they hid under what they used to call staria. I don't know how they call it in English. This thing, uh, these things that they uh, they use to protect the uh, land from erosions. So that's where um, in the ditch. That's where I went and hid myself. So. And in the process of hiding myself, actually, I had a, they had already uh, shot me. I, I had sustained some injuries because uh, one of the soldiers threw a, a grenade at us as we were fleeing. So I sustained, I sustained some injuries. When I start sustained, sustained the injuries on my leg, then I continued running, but I went in, uh, into the ditch. And the, then there was a, a person also. Uh, very far, I don't even remember the place, but we had crossed it over the hill. There was another guy who saw me, uh, who had an elderly uh, mother in that house. So he was coming to check on his mother, but he had fled. And um, his family has uh, fled in the Congoro and uh, in a, a place uh, on the way to Burundi. So the guy, uh, Later in the night, came to see me, to look at me, and said, I saw you, this happened to you. So I, that's why I thought that probably uh, you might still be alive. Uh, can I carry you to uh, our mother's house and uh, see how we can uh, treat the wounds and then continue uh, to see what we can do from there? Because now those people are very busy uh, fighting the, the media because uh, the, it was uh, all over the news. 
So now it's an opportunity for us to leave. So he said that he has a friends in Burundi. That's how uh, we went through the night, uh, crossed the, went uh, closer to Burundi, stayed there in another family where his family members were hiding then from there. Uh, it was uh, near the forest, the new forest. Then from there, we moved it to into Burundi. In, uh, I think it, it should be talking. There was a, a place he had friends there. And also part of his family had fled uh, earlier to that place. So they were waiting for him. Those days, you know, there were no cell phones. So it was just a word of, uh, of mouth. And the, when we got to Burundi, uh, Burundi people were so kind to receive us. And they, they received us and they treated us, uh, the injuries. And um, uh, for some times I stayed in Burundi. But the, the situation in Burundi, you know, that uh, there was also political upheavals between uh, to the Tutsis at that time. Dadae had been assassinated and they, uh, also Buyoya was uh, agitating for change so that he could come back to power. So the situation was still very, very, very tense in Burundi. But the luckily uh, people, the friends of, uh, actually I remember the guy, the guy was called the Kazimir. Uh, I will another of his name. His name was Kazimir. Wherever he is now, uh, God bless him because he really helped me. So uh, together with his family, we moved from one area of Burundi uh, from the border uh, into another place um, closer to uh, uh, to uh, Zaire, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. It used to be called the Zaire there. So we moved from that place and um, closer so that we could cross into uh, Kamanyora. Kamanyora, that's the Eastern DRC. So when we crossed into Eastern DRC, <laughs> it was also another uh, wonderful story because uh, uh, the Mobutu's soldiers actually uh, robbed us, took everything we had, and they, they left me with the underwears, and they, they took completely everything, and they took, uh, I didn't have money, I was uh, broke as hell at that time as a kid. But uh, my friends uh, who were with me, they took everything. And uh, I remember the only money survived in that family is the ma money that the, the mother who was carrying a baby had put between her and the baby as she carried the, the baby on her back. So mm -hmm. then um, we crossed into, uh, into Congo with nothing, actually. Mm -hmm. and we are then, uh, luckily, the Kamanyora uh, Hospital used to have uh, uh, Catholic missionaries, the nuns, who were looking at the people in very, very deplorable conditions. And uh, then from there, uh, I got some cloth and um, also got some medical attention. Then said, uh, the way my wounds looked because they were really smelling, very, very smelling. So they needed uh, some specialized treatment. And at that time, it happened that a Rwandan refugee um, was a, a military, medical military, uh, called uh, Mujemani, uh, fraud one, had uh, started a clinic for 